Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and this is the second episode of the Stedman TS100 and we were intended to run the car on the road today to do a test ride unfortunately the weather gods are not with me today it rains like hell and I'm a bit lucky right now but nevertheless there's a lot of other things we can still inspect on the car and I will do this for myself as an assessment but also for a potential buyer so Let's continue and look on the Stedman. And before we do so, let's have a little chat of what we're going to do. It is always good practice to do a proper assessment before you buy an old car. And it doesn't really matter if it's one that you're going to rebuild or is it one that has already been rebuilt and ready to go. Always do a proper assessment on the state on the car. And this is what I'm going to do on this one. Uh, we already did a little bit in the first video on this car, but now we're going to look a little bit deeper into it. And more specifically, we're going to be looking at the engine. We'll do a compression test. Now on this engine, I don't know what type of engine is in it. Is it a high compression engine or is it the low compression engine? Because they had two types. But we'll figure that out. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure that all the cylinders have the same compression ratio, more or less, with not too much difference between the cylinders. We'll also check the oil pressure on this car because I noticed that the gauge uh, didn't indicate a proper oil uh, pressure. But like with any other car that's been sitting still for a long time, you should really change the oil before you really start spinning it up for a longer time. And that's something we'll do as well. And that might be one of the first things we're going to do. We'll also check then the wheels. Uh, we're going to check actually the brakes, the brake pads and the brake discs. And we'll check for runouts and so on. Uh, we'll check the chassis, making sure there's no rot anywhere. So everything is rock solid. We'll check the suspension. And once we've done with this, that probably is going to be the end of this video. Uh, we might check later on also the uh, transmission box. Uh, we, this is an automatic and I know there is a filter inside. I'm not going to change that filter right away uh, because that's just normal maintenance. It's the same thing is true for the spark plugs. Uh, that's all standard replacement stuff. So uh, let's see if we can get some oil out of this car. So let's see what the state of the oil is. I don't see no white foam in here, which is already a good sign. If you have white foam, then typically it means that you have a leak between your cooling system and the oil system. So this can go back on. Now here we have a dipstick for the hydraulic oil, but what I'm missing is the dipstick for the engine. So the dipstick should be sitting right here, and that's not the case. In fact, there is a piece of metal here See that? That's what we have in there. So there is no dipstick. Um, so that's a missing part. That's certainly something we need to get. It's not a big deal. Probably somebody lost it. So that's the metal plug that was actually inside the opening for the dipstick. Uh, it's just to seal it off, I guess. But of course, you can't measure with it. So I'm going to put in now a plastic stick to see uh, how much oil there is in it. And I think I got to the bottom. Well, let's see. Well, there is oil in it, as you can see, and I don't know if it's enough or not, uh, but it still looks not too bad and fairly clean. And this is the dipstick for the automatic transmission. So, um, well, let's see, uh, there is oil in it. Uh, note that there is always a cold side. Uh, this is the cold side, and this is the minimum, the maximum. I think it's sitting at the maximum. In, if the transmission was hot, you need to turn over the dipstick and you find the hot mark and that's the minimum and the maximum. So this is looking good and it looks fairly clean, so I'm going to put this back. Before we do the compression test, the engine has to be at operating temperature and since the oil is very old on this engine, I'm going to change it first. And then we warm up the engine and do the compression test. All right, got a bucket underneath. And hopefully I don't spill too much. Well, it's not clean the oil, but it's not really dirty either. So, um, and at least there's no water in it, which is a very good sign. So the engine needs around eight liters of oil. So um, that's something we will fill up very shortly. And that's the oil that came out of the car. And as you can see, it's just about 4 liters. Now, normally the engine takes about 8.5 liters. 
but of course I have not changed the oil filter and there could be some oil in the oil cooler so um, yeah it was I think it was a bit low on oil anyway um, so I'm going to pour in about eight liters of fresh oil and I do like to use castor oil castor oil GTX uh, this is the recommended Jaguar oil so we have eight liters of fresh engine oil inside the engine now now a quick glance at the cooling system this is certainly not the original expansion tank because there's a Volkswagen sign on it so let's have a look how much cooling liquid there is inside and this again is an expansion tank and well there is cooling liquid inside but I think it's actually at the minimum um, so we'll check it out and see what the weight is of that cooling liquid so how much does it protect really against frost the other thing is that we have a fan here and this is a electrical fan which has been installed afterwards which is really good because it has a sensor which is adjustable on one of the water hoses and I'll show you that in a second the original sensor is right here uh, for the fan but that's no longer used because now this car has an adjustable sensor so the modification that was done is by fitting a Revotec sensor inside the cooling system. So this is the new temperature sensor and the good thing about it is it is adjustable. And those of you that prepare cars often or work on race cars, you know Revotec very well. Now inside you have a little uh, dial in and you can actually select the temperature at what moment in time you want the fan to kick in or to stop running. So this is always a very good implementation of the sensors, much better than the uh, original ones on the uh, radiator. So let's check the cooling liquid and see how much it still protects the engine. And as you can see, it's still good for about minus 20 degrees centigrade, but the color is a bit rusty, I think. Anyway, um, it's good practice to drain the cooling liquid anyway and replace it about every one to two years. And while we are busy checking liquids, we might as well check the power steering. And this one, well, it certainly needs some. I can see some inside, but um, it's really low, so we really need to fill this guy up. And any type of automatic transmission fluid will just do the job. And we're going to add a little bit of ATF to the uh, power steering. And ATF is automatic transmission fluid. Let's see. I think now we have the right level. And as you can tell, this is the XJ6 suspension. Uh, overall, this is looking quite good. And let's see. I, I don't feel any play on this, really. So this is... This is really good, um, so I don't expect any problems with this. And this suspension is very solid as well because it's coming from that Jaguar and the road holding is really, really good. And here we have the ladder frame and that is really rock solid. Um, there's no rust on it, it's pretty well protected. And I even see a chassis number here, so let's zoom in on that a bit and see what that is. And here is that chassis number, so I just like to clean that up a bit and see what it says. All right. All right, that looks pretty good. So it's readable 1G12078 DN. The brake lines are looking good, they are not corroded. So the exhaust sits good, the exhaust is sitting good, very well supported. Um, the chassis is really good, all the members are good, even the cross members, um, there's no rust on it whatsoever. Uh, this is pretty well uh, done before, so and it's kind of protected already. So the two big um, ladder beams are here, that's good. And I'm just checking on the engine if there's any leaks. There's a little bit of liquid here, but that's almost nothing. And of course, the car has been sitting there for a long time. So, um, yeah, overall, this is pretty good stuff. Um, by the way, this is the area where the filter is for the automatic transmission, which will change.
so now we are about ready for the compression test, but before we do so, I need to warm up the engine. So I'm going to crank it up, let it get to operating temperature, and then we do the compression test. All right. So let's see if it starts. So now I'm going to let it run for a while, and then um, we come back. All right. That's long enough. It's on temperature, so now we can do the compression test. I'm going to remove all the spark plugs. And there's more fun things than doing this on a hot engine, but it has to be done. Uh, let's see where we can place this, where it doesn't get caught. And now it's just a matter of removing the spark plugs um, one by one. And once they're all removed, um, I will put in the uh, compression meter, cylinder by cylinder, crank over the engine a couple of times, and we'll see what the reading is. Now all of them do look pretty gray, so um, maybe a little bit too gray, maybe it's a little bit too hot. I have connected the compression meter to the last cylinder, so cylinder number six. So now I'm going to crank over the engine a couple of times and see what kind of compression we have. And I'll do this with full throttle. And as you can see, we got a nice uh, 12 kilograms, uh, even a bit more, which is really, really good. So now I'm going to do the same for all cylinders. So all the cylinders are really matched up nicely, and this looks like the high compression engine. I've got on cylinder number 6, 175, 173 on cylinder 5, 175 on cylinder 4, 173 on 3, 174 on 2, and 175 on 1. So that's good. Uh, below you see the kilopascals, uh, so this was all about 12. So this engine is in a top, top condition in terms of compression. So now it's time to check the oil pressure and the gauge in the dashboard barely moves a little bit. I should have at least 40 psi. Um, but I'm going to measure the sensor unit, and the sensor unit is on the engine block. It's actually a variable resistor, so I'm having my ohm meter here, um, and I'm going to use my ohm meter between the sensor and the ground of the car, and I can see what the impedance is. And right now it's around 290 ohms. Um, if the engine runs, that should drop, because then you draw more current and the needle should deflect on your gauge, and that doesn't happen. All the way on the bottom here, we have our sender unit, so I disconnected the cable, so I'm going to clip on my ohm meter. And the other lead is going to the negative side of the battery. And as you can see, right now we have about 300 ohms. And right now we have about 300 ohms. If I now crank up the engine, that should really drop. So as pressure builds up, that value should go down. As you can see, it's already dropping. I'm going to give it a bit of throttle and it should even get lower down. So I think we have proper uh, oil pressure. The oil pressure is really not a problem, as we have seen. The sensor is working as it should. However, the gauge itself is not recording properly. So it could be a bad ground, it could be something else, maybe just a blown fuse, uh, but this is something we'll need to check out later. But now it's time to check the brakes. The discs, they look as good as brand new. Of course, they're a little bit rusted, but that's just surface rust. So the brake pads are as good as new. 
and so is the brake caliber. The hoses uh, are not corroded or cracked, so that's another good point. So all by all, I think the brakes are quite all right. But we're still going to do a run-out test. A run-out test is very simple. It's a gauge that is measuring how much play or deflection there is on the disc. And I don't expect anything because these are new discs, but it also tells you uh, things about the bearings. So let's turn it around and you can see this is really not changing at all. So this is really good. So we've been looking at a lot of things on this TS100 and overall this car is in a pretty good condition. The brakes are good, uh, the tires are good, the wheels are good, the lights are good. Uh, the engine is really good because it has 12 kilograms per cylinder which is really good or 175 PSI. Really, really, that's amazing. So that engine is in top condition. Yeah, there's a few small things like um, the oil pressure gauge that isn't working properly. That's a little bit of corrections that will have to be done. But for the rest, this car is having a great chassis underneath. There is no rust whatsoever. It's well protected. I think this car is going to drive real well once we take it on the road. And of course, you still might want to change all the liquids on the braking system. That's something what you always do every year or every two years. So change the brake fluid, change the cooling fluid on this car and also probably one you want to change the uh, automatic um, gearbox oil. Nothing wrong with this gearbox but you might want to change it together with the filter if you ever get a car like this. So if you're interested in this car uh, let me know. Uh, my mail address is in the description box. And that's it for now on this car. Next time I'll probably make a little video when we take it on a spin if it stops with raining at least. And then um, we'll continue with Old Rusty because I know this has been a while ago. We've done some work on Old Rusty, but that's coming this week. And also we're going to start on that race car um, very soon. So thank you so much for viewing and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.